Is it playing? It's not playing. Nope. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, folks. It's the Pod Squad with Wendy Card, Talina Massey, yes. Pat Drake, and yours truly, Marty. Oh, thanks for joining us <laughs> for the New Burns podcast for November, December 9th, 2021. This is episode 205. And we are connecting you with people. I think you're frozen, Pat, or is it me? I put it on the other thing. I'm going in and out too much. Okay. Okay. We're connecting you with the people, places, and happenings. In I'm New frozen. Earth. Did you get me at all? Uh, no. You want, you want to try it again? I'll, okay, I'll, I'll uh, do we're connecting you with people, places, and all the happenings in New Bern and surrounding areas. And surrounding areas. Okay. Tech support is here. <laughs> Selena? <laughs> Let's get started with the contest. So to be entered, you went to, uh, to be entered to win, make sure that you comment during today's show on New Burn Now's Facebook page. That's New Burn Now's Facebook page, not yours or anyone that shared. Uh, so, yeah. So today's trivia question. Um, for today's trivia question, if more than one person answers, we'll put names in a hat and draw the winner tonight. Uh, you'll get a gift certificate to a local business. Yes. You want to know the yep. question? Yes. Um, I don't have the question. Okay. I, I do. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thursday, everyone. Thank you all for, for watching and listening. We're, we're getting there. Okay. The question, today's question is, when was the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame founded. I didn't know we had one. I was gonna, gonna say, did you know we had one? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Mm. You Hall, of fame, Hall of Fame for what, Wendy? Sports? Sports. Like all sports. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, pretty interesting. I just learned about it today, like 10 minutes before the show. <laughs> <laughs> So how are we doing? You, I haven't seen Mari and, and uh, Talina in a while. And well, Pat, I'm you, just around. Got back. you just got back from traveling. So what's going on? Well, let's see. We're enjoying all the exciting things in our community for the holidays. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 14 hour drive to New York uh, did my sciatica nerve in. So um, uh, recovering on that a little bit. Um, tree is up though and decorated and some front lawn decorations are out there and um, having a good time. Enjoyed the Newburn Parade last Saturday. It was amazing. I think it was bigger and lots more people than two years ago. Yeah, people are just, wow, there's no parking downtown. Like, even during the day, like, yeah, so the weekday, there we go. And, and <laughs> Talina, last time we saw you was at the uh, cover shoot with your mom. Yes. My mom is uh, great. She's actually out shopping right now for Christmas because I'm uh, working from home. So she's doing some shopping for me. Um, but she's settling in as a new New Bernian and, and learning about all the cool history and things that are, that are attached to us. So um, I think we're okay. My Christmas tree isn't up yet, so I'm not okay with that. But, um, <laughs> when I have some time off work this weekend, I will definitely make it feel a little bit more festive around my home, especially with my two teenagers here. So, yeah, yeah. the kids really need that, I think. But for I sure, think, I think we need the smell of Christmas. You know, <laughs> the the pine tree smell. And Mari's got it going on behind her. She's got Frosty peeking over her shoulder. Or actually, it's a Frosty slash tree. Cool. How's it going, Mari? You're, you you, well, you, you know, got a new business, huh? I've been uh, missing out on everything because I'm working all the time, as usual. So um, 
I'm pretty bummed out because all the festivities like Pat was talking about downtown, I'm like, I'm going this year, I'm going this year. And every year I, I, I feel like I miss it <laughs> the past few years. So next year, but um, yeah, we've been busy. We, uh, we sold our food truck about a month ago and we took over the genus uh, pizza in James City and we changed that name to Dope. Um, and we're putting out some good, good stuff. We just sold out of cheesesteaks today for lunch. It's ridiculous, but um, it's been, it's been awesome and busy. <laughs> you got and some yeah. really so, interesting menu items. We have some good stuff. We've been doing uh, like every other Saturday, if I can, we're doing um, breakfast pizzas too. And like the favorite, I think I saw a million posts on Facebook, um, yeah, the, Eggs Benedict, the Eggs Benedict pizza. And that's Honestly, when we made that, I said, this is the best pizza I've had in my whole life. It's freaking delicious. So we're making some good stuff. And you, so you, you run out quick. So you got to get there before. I mean, we, yeah, I didn't, I think it was a Saturday, last Saturday or Saturday before last. We, at 6.30, we, everything was gone pretty much. We couldn't make anything else. We could piece together some things, but it was crazy. So it's been going really well. And everyone's been really, really awesome about it. So. A lot of work, but what else is there to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did just get back from Bryson City. I went sat a Sunday night. My family, we took my granddaughter to uh, the Polar Express, and that was really awesome. It was so much fun. And wow. seeing it through a four-year-old's eyes is just, I mean, it's its like icing on the cake. It's so great. She had, Magical. A, she had a blast. Yeah, it was fun. Very cool. I've never been. Oh, it's yeah. just, it's worth it. Lena, Pat, have you guys been? I've not done the Polar Express. I've been to that town and we did the train, but we did the one before the Polar Express. It was just Mac and I, but it was really nice in Bryson City. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. I'd love to go. Um, like I said, I have I actually have teenagers and they've kind of lost the, the Christmas nostalgia part of it. Um, so I'm trying to find ways to spark, you know, their interest back and, and maybe just taking a ride out there would be, you know, something that we can do as a family. So yeah. thank you for the, um, the idea. Heck yeah, it was worth it. It's just <laughs> nice to be in the mountains too. And mm -hmm. I'm just glad there was no snow because I don't do snow. <laughs> Not even a little? No, a little I, I hate it. Nope. <laughs> I don't like it. If I don't have to leave the house and I can it's pretty for like five minutes. If I have to leave the house after that, I'm done. I yeah. can't. <laughs> Understand that. Hey, Mary, hang in there too with working. You know, my husband and I, we owned the UPS store for 25 years. We never oh, no participate kidding. in anything for Christmas either, believe me. So nah. you know, we missed all the festivities. Two years ago was our first parade. Wow. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing the cookie walk this week. I've never done the cookie walk that Christ Episcopal Church has and all sorts of other festivities we always miss because yeah. we're exhausted, not like what oh, yeah. you're talking about, you know, yeah. and you really need to, unfortunately, with a small business, you need to do that. Yeah. Oh, and then when you do have some time off, you have to do everything you, you have to do, <laughs> not the things you want to do. So it'll come. It will come. It'll get there. No, yeah, yeah, you'll get there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And well, and Talina, are you, you're still a member at the Craven Arts Council, right? Yeah, I am on the Craven Arts Council board. So we've got some, some awesome things going on there as well, which I will um, announce towards the end of the show. Um, but uh, yes, between them and the uh, NAACP's Christmas party um, and things like that, we've got some some pretty good things coming up there, some pretty uh, great opportunities for, well, I guess I could just tell you. Um, one of the things is uh, the the uh, YUP is getting together with the uh, NAACP and the um, the Sigma uh, fraternity, excuse me, the Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, Inc., uh, Eta Theta Sigma chapter out of Jacksonville, North Carolina on December 17th to have its annual Christmas party but it's going to be partying with a purpose. Uh, we are asking that um, people who come, supporters and members, um, bring an unwrapped toy instead of paying for their meal. And um, those toys will be collected over two weeks and distributed to families um, in need. And not only just a toy, but also um, 
a $25 Walmart gift card because we know that not all families have small children who want toys. Also that that um, money could go towards something um, that they really need. So uh, we've got some some good stuff coming up here. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I brought up the Bank of the Arts because I was just down there yesterday and it's it's beautiful inside. So yes. if you haven't been, even if you, you just have five minutes just to pop in, it's just it's just gorgeous. So they did a wonderful job decorating and yeah. So awesome. actually most of the the businesses have. So have you decorated your business there, Mari? Yes. The oven. We have that old uh old old oven in the inside there and at first i was like what an eyesore and i thought oh i can open the doors and yeah so i've got that all decked out <laughs> it's pretty but i think i'm gonna have to put that oven to use as busy as we've been so we might have to yeah. tear it all down and <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you'll figure it out oh yeah yeah all right. so we can, a spinning tree at flows if you guys haven't seen it. i've never seen a i didn't know that they sold the bases where the trees spin Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just getting getting into that. So um, um, for those who don't know, I manage a, a nightclub here called Flo's Lounge. Um, it's Flo's Extravaganza on News Boulevard. And uh, Miss Flo decorated a beautiful tree to put inside of there. And it's a beautiful spinning pink and white tree. Um, you guys ever get a chance or you're out on a Friday or Saturday night, feel free to stop by and check out the tree next to the fireplace. It's it's a sight to see, especially with all the LEDs and things going on. Oh, that's neat. Well, Very cool. And if people don't know where Flows is, it's located on? News Boulevard, 2704 News Boulevard. It's one of the newer uh, businesses that opened up this July. And um, it's it's actually been quite, quite a success so far. So I thank all the supporters. And anyone that hasn't been out there, please feel free to come out, we will also be hosting the uh, movie premiere after party for our good friend Deasia Fulmore, who is coming out with her third uh, short movie here in the area. Uh, she's out of Jones County, but she works here for the city of New Bern. Um, she's got a movie premiere. It's going to have some celebrities from the movie here on February 5th for that movie premiere at the Jones uh, County Civic Center. And that after party is going to be at Flows as well. So we're, we're pretty busy. Wow, that's I didn't awesome. know that was you. That <laughs> that's good. Yeah. You're managing a lot, Talina. You got a lot. You always have something on your plate. And uh, we have our first guest in the room. So or should we bring him in the, the room, the Zoom room, whatever you want to call this? Sure. And it's Roger Bennett. And Roger is here to talk about the Craven Consort. It's a concert at... Um, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. Let's see. I'm trying to bring him in. And Let me see, Roger. I, they like to sing in my church that, come on in the room. Tell Roger to come on in the room. <laughs> he got a beautiful voice. Oh, well, uh, thank there you. you are. You got your video going. Can we hear you? Now, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Thank I'm you. Here to, I'm a representative of the Craven Consort, and we're going to have a program on Sunday, the 19th of December at three o'clock in the afternoon down at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church uh, in New Bern. And it's going to be, a, we are an instrumental consort. Uh, there is a, it's a quintet. There are five of us, four woodwind players and one percussionist. And uh, we're going to be playing naturally music of the holidays, but we're playing very special music of the holidays, wonderfully arranged for our instruments. We have three recorders and a transverse flute and a cajon for our percussion and uh it'll be a really fine program and it's also being used to raise money for the reopening of the craven community chorus which has been on hold because of the pandemic so there will be a free will offering taken then uh for that but we would love people to come out because we're playing very 
unique Christmas music. Uh, everybody has heard the Christmas songs, but these will, have been wonderfully and unusually arranged. So they'll be a really good program. So I hope you could come out. It sounds like a wonderful program. Wow. Um, so how long have you been um, in the music industry? Forever, it seems like. <laughs> but I've been playing music here in New Bern since 1972 Ooh. when I moved here. I had formerly been teaching in Ohio and I came down here to start uh, teaching at Craven Community College not music, by the way, but English, a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> and uh, I came here then, and I have had a group called the Craven Consort with a variety of players for many years. The group I have right now is a really active, good group. And we're also all members of the Craven Community Chorus as singers, but we couldn't practice as singers during the pandemic, but we could, since we were a small group, get together and play our instruments, and we have done so. And so we did put a program on last spring down at the Arts Council, the Bank of the Arts. And, uh, we have been giving a gift to New Bern since the pandemic. Every Friday night for the past year or so, we have played music in downtown New Bern. No charge. We put our hat out though and sometimes <laughs> collect enough bucks to have a coffee after it's all over. But we've enjoyed doing that. But we're especially excited about this program on December the 19th. It's a Sunday afternoon. And I think it'll be a really good program. Um, some of you may know, um, Dr. Barbara Bellon, she's the one who helped organize uh, this uh, program or series of arts programs that have been there. You know, um, St. Andrew's Lutheran suffered quite a lot of damage during Hurricane Florence. And only this fall have they been able to open their sanctuary completely. And it's acoustically wonderful, quite beautiful, and uh, is really a good place to spend uh, this coming Sunday afternoon. Wonderful. And and what what time is that? Three o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday the 19th at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. Wonderful. So um, if, if anyone has any questions, do you all have a website or anything? Uh, we do not have a website. We do have, we can, I can be reached and contacted by phone if need be i'll give you my number 252-772-8304 or 252-269-4361 now hold up our program for everybody oh, hold it, let, <laughs> me, let me zoom in on you hold on one sec yeah probably not that close but <laughs> they call oh, wait maybe you there. Can... <coughs> there you go <laughs> i don't know there you go there you go <laughs> it kind of shows up yeah yeah well, anyway <laughs> yeah we're looking forward to that by the way um it's nice to see uh whom i call mrs mac paul because uh, uh yes, hi. <laughs> mac was a student of mine at the college uh a number of years ago and I've done business with him, everything from sending packages to taking him jars of peanut butter when he was collecting <laughs> for uh, various charities. And uh, I've known him uh, for a good many years, and he is certainly a great uh, friend of New Bern. You guys both have been great friends of New Bern for many years. I'm sorry that I don't know the others of you yet, but I hope to meet you. Well, thank you for the kind words that I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a former New Yorker married to a native New Bernian, so it's been a good mix. I am sure that <laughs> makes an interesting, interesting mix. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and our players come 
from right here in New Bern or Massachusetts or Pennsylvania. Uh, two of our players uh, are from Pennsylvania and my wife Elizabeth is from Massachusetts, from Sandwich, and I am from Pennsylvania, and that was Elizabeth <laughs> waving there. And, uh, and then um, our own Karen Ellenberger is from right here in New Bern. Of course, her mother, Marilyn Johnson, is an organist. She's retired, of course, now, and was for many years an organist at uh, uh, Centenary and Christ Church and a number of the downtown churches in New Bern. So we bring a good deal of musical heritage into our get together. And we do, by the way, love to go to, uh, I don't know what their things are correctly called. I call them shopping trucks, but they're probably some other the, name for them. The food, food, food trucks. trucks. Yeah, food trucks. They're great. Mari owned uh, the food truck person. Mari Halifat Food, and now she owns uh, her and her husband own Gina's. It used to be G Gina's, and it's dough. Oh, oh, you're Gina's Pizza too. Gina's Pizza, I've known. She's <laughs> just down from the college, so we've had many, many oh, yeah. Gina's pizzas. Well, we took the one in James City. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah we're I know James where City. it is. Yep. Our, one of our couples that plays music with us lives over that way, so we're yeah. often over there. Well, come see We've me. had to rehearse in homes during this pandemic thing because you really couldn't do some of the things in public. We're outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot of playing outside, which is was fun until it sort of started to get chilly oh. weather. But... Um, <laughs> Certainly, whenever there's been an art walk downtown, we're always downtown there for that. And I think the city of New Bern was really wise, uh, I think, with the help of Swiss Spirit, whatever, to close the downtown during the summer streets on the weekend evenings so that they could have dining outside. And we, we played music for up and down the streets in Bear Plaza and uh, at the little overhang near the ice cream store, the Bear ice cream store. So yeah, we, we're here and playing all the time, uh, but we're glad to have a chance to uh, talk about us in uh, this forum. And I must admit to you, and probably you can tell, uh, you, after, you know, I've been a college professor my whole life, <laughs> but nobody had invented webinars yet. <laughs> so I did not know what one was, but I had to ask one of my friends this morning, and my wife has been here pushing buttons either, for so me. <laughs> and uh, so we, we have been able uh, to join, but my big worry was my hair was going to be all right, and what would I wear for the right color shirt or whatever. Uh, I, mean, look I didn't at this. used to read the news on TV uh, at a TV station, so I knew then about uh, wearing blue, not white, and stuff like that. But this is an all new experience for me, and it has been fun. There you go. And and Roger, just to let you know, we're going to be um, gearing up to take the show back on the road. We used to do it at um, different businesses. We I, yeah. we'd bring the equipment to live stream, and it, and and then we upload the information to the local radio station, but. Hopefully we'll be out in person being able to. It know. would be wonderful. You could come and we'll put a show on for you. Oh, there wow. You that's awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, their plaza. When we play downtown, interesting people always come by. And we now know to take dog bones with us because people <laughs> yeah. bring their pets. <laughs> And uh, we have to have both big ones and small ones to be able to long. feed the, uh, so kennel <laughs> biscuits or whatever we have uh, save the day for us many a time. They're our best wonderful. dogs, they, they come see us. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, for, for our 100th episode back, um, that was a long time, we're at the 205, I think, right now. Yeah, she but, said 205. Yeah, so for our 100th episode, we did it at the Isaac Taylor house where we started back in oh. 2014 doing the, the podcasting. And we uh, 
the barbershop quartet, the uh, Southern Gentlemen. Southern Gentlemen, yeah. They sang. So, um, but we yeah, definitely we would love like to that. hear you. So. Yeah, well, and I have played music at the Isaac Taylor House for uh, weddings and so forth a number mm -hmm. of times in their backyard in the summer. So it's a really pleasant setting. Yes. Very much well, so. It's been such a pleasure that you joined us today. Thank you so much, Roger. Good. And, and thank you so much for letting us do that. You, now, yeah. do I have to do anything special to say goodbye and go away, or will it automatically <laughs> do that? <laughs> <laughs> when I say I didn't, I'm, you know, technically challenged. Well, I, I was totally technically challenged uh, before, you know, when, when COVID hit. I just, but yet, we we evolve obviously you know that absolutely future. so and thank you so much it, it's been a pleasure and uh we'll see you on sunday good so. very much so sunday at three o'clock st andrew's church the on the 19th. 19th on the 19th okay the gotcha. 19th all right roger we'll we'll get you off the screen but in good before thank that, you so much we just want to say thank you <laughs> yeah you, roger. good job have a great day. I will. All right. <laughs> that was wonderful. Wow. I can't believe I haven't seen them downtown. But then again, I, I've been stuck in my little, I'm not in a basement. I'm in my office. <laughs> but I have been getting out. You know who I saw? Oh, my gosh. It was like I was starstruck. Yesterday, I uh, Don Jones wrote a, a, an article. She's with uh, Brutopia, and she wrote an article about uh, Pete Fry and the Brewery Ninety Nine that's going to be featured in our upcoming magazine. And I went by there a couple of weeks ago to take pictures, but something just pulled me in. Like I had a half a glass of their Imperial Stout, I think, <laughs> last time, and I'm like, you know what? I have like a half an hour, so I'm going to pop in and uh, I caught up with some some people I haven't seen in a long time. It wasn't crowded, but um, I took pictures and it was Ryan Bethia. Do you know who he is? I saw your picture yesterday. Yeah, he's a North Carolina um, oyster farmer and he's he's just an incredible guy and you know, when i saw him i was like oh wow holy cow yeah i'm a big fan so i mean <laughs> i i've been following um his progress on the nc coastal federation um mm -hmm. you know their their website they have videos and just really interesting stuff about our our coast you know our coast and our waterways so mm -hmm. i want to and he, he does he what does he take oysters there and people are allowed to come pick up bushels or is that they, what he, they were getting ready to steam that i think steam them oh, okay. they had this big pot so i guess every when i think it's every wednesday i think so too um i had not, i had not heard that but then again yeah. i haven't been out so <laughs> it's 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 great to finally get back um out and about so yeah for sure yeah. do we have time for another uh plug for your contest yes we do yes okay when was the north carolina sports hall of fame founded you're like we didn't know we had one so do, do can you all want to guess where where it was founded <laughs> um, i guess raleigh i'm gonna guess wilmington in Raleigh, Raleigh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's, it was a toss up, right? Um, okay. We'll let's have see. to enter on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. You have to enter to win during this live stream. So, when was the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame founded? So, answer during the show. And Nick said go. I'm not sure who. Thanks for watching, Nick. We we appreciate it. And uh, what else? Okay, um, Michelle Moore uh, with D2 Flight Academy. She was going to join us, and something came up at the last minute.
So I will read a little bit about what um, she was going to talk about. Have you all been over to the uh, Coastal Carolina Regional Airport, the other side where the yeah, the EEA is and the Trade Winds um, Training Academy? Well, yes. Trade Winds um, was it's no longer Trade Winds. I, I must have been living under a rock to not know. It's called D2 Flight Academy, and it's run by Naval Avi Aviators. Um, and they're having an aviation fun camp to be a kid again. That would be awesome. Um, since D2 took over in, in 2019, the focus has been on expanding the flight school into a full-fledged flight academy. The air transport industry is expanding and the future of aviation is a bright one. This is, this is a big deal because I remember uh, Andy Shorter, who was the director over there, he was on our show a couple of years back and he said that there, there's, there's going to be a major shortage of pilots. So um, this is just wonderful. And they encourage local youth to consider a career in aviation. So they're offering a winter aviation fun <coughs> camp during the holidays, December 27th through 30, the 31st. Uh, it's an opportunity to have a unforgettable aviation memories and meet new friends for middle to high school age students and it's uh they're offering a special uh pri a special discount and for details call 252-802-8021 or visit d2 dash f as in frank a is an alpha.com so that's really cool stuff. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, we need. I need to get over there and do a little video or something. But wouldn't that be fun? Like, yeah. have you all ever like co co flown a plane or anything? Nope. Nope. Just jumped out one. That's all. No, no, no. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> That's all. I almost fell out of one when we were in Okinawa trying to transport a patient off the <laughs> flight deck, but uh, no, that was a helicopter. <laughs> I'll it's never get on a helicopter again. I don't know what people pay to get on a helicopter. Oh my God. <laughs> no, you have to pay me a million dollars to get on one. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we do we have any adventurers? I mean, Talina, I'm guessing you were you were made to do that. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Jump out the the helicopter and the plane. That was that was always fun. Um, but outside of that, um, I haven't done it recently. But I do have plans on um, joining you know, Alder Woman Harris again to jump out in a plane. She did it for her, I believe, for her thirtieth birthday. Um, so I think we're going to try it again and see how that goes. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's gotta be amazing, but I just I can't. I can't. <laughs> I, can't I mean, I was scared of repelling in boot camp. It was. Uh, I, just, I can't. You get me on a step ladder, and I'm like shaking and shaking. Yeah, I definitely plan to to um, another on my bucket list is to go to a D two, and I've always wanted to be like a, a small plane pilot. So that's a. Uh, Another thing you didn't know about me, Wendy, I have aspirations to fly. So wow. I would like to um, try that out maybe one day next year. If I could get some of the stuff off my plate, as you mentioned, um, I'll try to do that. There you go. Yeah. And we have a lot of private pilots. I'm really surprised at the amount of pilots in yeah. in this area. So, well, it must be because they probably retire from Cherry Point or yeah. New River. Or, yeah. Anyway, uh, Pat. Do you like yes, flying? Do you prefer I, driving? I don't mind flying. I'm, I'm okay with flying. Um, my older son's always been afraid of heights. And what he did is he went and jumped out of a plane. There you go. <laughs> he out, out of his fear of heights. <laughs> but Max talked about wanting to possibly do a pilot school. So it'll be interesting. It's a good thing that camp has an age limit. You know, yeah. if, he could, if he could make himself look younger like a high school kid. <laughs> They well, need to expand that for adults. You know, some of the retirees, mm -hmm. if they could pass the tests physically with eyesight and hearing, 
you know, yeah. maybe they could do a, an, an old people's camp. <laughs> <laughs> now, seasoned people's camp, yes. right? <laughs> Mature. <laughs> Mature uh, silver citizens. <laughs> uh, there you go. Fifty-five and better, as the news for the senior <laughs> games always says. So I'm almost there. I'm fifty-four, so I can't wait. I'll get my uh, AARP card, I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, let's see what else is going on. Do we have Chris in the waiting room? Yes, we do. Are, is there anything you all want to talk about real quick or no? I think I'm going to make it to the Holly and Ivy tour. I think I'm going to manage to make it. That's this Saturday, right? Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. The, when is it? The, it's Saturday. the 11th. What day is today? That's this Saturday. No, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to make it. Well, good, because Chris Chris is going to tell us all about it. She was on here yeah. a couple months ago, and she's yep. going to give us an update. So, and about their Christmas cards too, their note cards that I saw at Mitchell Hardware the other day. So, mm -hmm. and here she comes. Whoop! Did I just I muted oh. to lean? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, Hi. first thing I need to say is that there is no reason whatsoever to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> none, none you, whatsoever. <laughs> so Chris is here to talk about the Holly and the, and the Ivy. Chris Grotsky um, with the New Bern Women's Club, not women's, but woman's club. Yes, it's a, a single woman's possessive. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you ready or are you oh, we, uh, do you all get nervous before this or no, it is such a fun thing. I we really look forward to it every year and there's nothing to be nervous about other than weather. We always get a little nervous because the event just doesn't quite as much fun when it's rainy. So we are really looking forward to it and it is tomorrow and tickets are selling out fast. So if tomorrow. you want tickets right now, they're still available in advance at both Harris Teeter locations and at Bank of the Arts. You can call Bank of the Arts and also have, uh, have them uh, sell it to you for with a credit card. Uh, it's cash only at Harris Teeter locations and the in advance, they're $15, and on the day of the event, they're 18 So you save yourself a couple of bucks. 50 cents per house you save if you, if you buy them. Wow, hey, that's a, that's a steal. There's a bargain. Oh, so a bargain you, had, you. you had said tomorrow. Is it the 11th? Oh, I'm or sorry. Something? Saturday, not tomorrow. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Tomorrow I'm baking cookies. Tomorrow I'm baking <laughs> cookies. For the sugar plum house right the sugar plum treat house that's right the sugar plum go. treat house this year is the william hollister house which has just been lovingly restored by bill cobb and rachel hall and that's at 613 broad street that's where we get the uh, the homemade cookies and cider thanks and so what else happens during the tour like uh, what should what should people expect if they've never attended if you've never attended the Holly and Ivy, you should expect to see six beautifully decorated historic homes all in the historic district. You can park your car centrally and walk to each one. And I don't recommend that you start at 10 o'clock and 1030 in the morning at house number one, because then you might arrive at some lines. So pick two or three or four or five and, and start there and work on your tour. So you can, you know, spoke out from your car, wherever you've parked in the historic district, or um, if you're not as ambulatory, you might think about, you know, driving from location to location or, or setting your car somewhere in between, say, two houses and then another. The uh, Holly and Ivy ticket it looks like this, and it has a map on it, and all of the locations are marked on the map. So um, each house, there are six homes. They're all decorated for Christmas. And you, you walk in and look mostly at Christmas decorations. You hear a little bit about the history of the houses 
And it's a, it's a fundraiser for the Newburn Women's Club. And we have six homeowners every year who just generously open their homes to us and let us uh, walk through. Our, our Women's Club members are docents and we wear uh, darling uh, starched white pinafores and mop caps. And at the Sugar Plum Treats House, we've got cookies out for you. A beautiful array of cookies on display on silver trays. I've been polishing my silver, so <laughs> those are ready for you too. Very cool. And so the, I remember, uh, was it Paula? Oh my gosh, I can't remember her last name. She was the president um, back a while back. I don't know. You must be Paula. You must mean Paula Hilton Lindsay. Oh yes, Paula Lindsay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, she was. She told us um, we did a video down at I think at Union. Point Park and, and she told us about the gazebo and the history of the women's club and I think at the time you were a hundred you're not a hundred five years old but the club was a hundred and five years old how old is the club now well I just turned 65 on Monday so <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> I, I tell you I am president number 60 of the Newburn Women's Club wow. it was established in 1905 Wow. And it was established at a time when a lot of women were organizing nationwide for the purpose of uh, achieving education for themselves, for their children, and bettering their, uh, their own personal lives and their communities. And they were also campaigning for the vote. There was not a vote and uh, suffrage for women until the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. So they were organized in 1905. Mm -hmm. I think we gave our first scholarship in 1913. And so we have three different scholarships that we fund. All of the funds that we raise remain local, by the way. Um, and we did, we built, uh, during the depression, Union Point Park was absolutely a dump. It was full of old cars and old boilers and mattress springs and the women's club organized and got the entire community behind cleaning up Union Point and turning it into a park for the city for, for perpetuity. And as a result, we were able to have a, a small clubhouse built there and that it, and approximately the site of where the gazebo is now. So we had a small clubhouse there for many years. A lot of the longtime residents of Newburn actually remember going to that clubhouse and having dances and things like that. And they entertained in World War II, they entertained soldiers who were uh, coming and going off to war. And um, we've done a lot of different things, but we are also part of the fundraising effort to replace that clubhouse with a gaze the gazebo later. We donated funds to the, uh, the Great Fire, uh, not necessarily funds, but uh, relief for a lot of people who lost their homes and businesses, provided meals and provided uh, clothing and uh, probably some tents and things like that. A lot of people lived in tents after that. So we have a, a long history. We're not a big money club, but we do, I think, a lot of good and uh, we do it all from the heart. Yes, yes, you do. And and you you have the note cards I saw down at, I think they're called note cards. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, it's yes. Kind of I have virtual to. hardware and I went to grab one and I, I didn't have any cash on me. So <laughs> it was it's cash or check only, right? It's, it's cash or check for the note cards. That's correct. And let me show it to you. Okay, hold on. It looks like this. Those are pretty. This is a, a winter scene note card and it's blank inside. So you can use them for a hostess gift or for your own thank you notes or for your own holiday or Christmas cards. They're perfect for all, okay, all of those occasions. And that is a winter scene that's at, from a photograph that was taken in December of 2010. And uh, so many people were sharing photographs at that time that one of our members, Frankie Waters, decided to gather all of those together. And we put together six separate scenes of snowfall around Newburn. And those were very popular. We sold a lot of them for many years. 
and we decided to resurrect the one card that was the favorite, which is the Baxter clock with City Hall uh, clock tower in the background. And so we've resurrected that. And that was our fundraiser last year because we didn't have a Holly and I. Yeah. But okay. we were still able to, we were still able to fund all of our scholarships and and keep ourselves going even even though we didn't have our signature fundraiser, which is the Holly and Ivy. Mm -hmm. And you're I'm back. Here since 1994, and I remember the clubhouse. It was still <laughs> at Union Point when I first moved here years back. Uh, your note cards are also at Port Charlie's, I believe. Uh, they're and for sale at three locations. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. For sale it's also a great the, article about the uh, tour in the Sun Journal. Uh, I, I tell you what, I am I, I'm trying not to let all of this fame go to my head. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, the, the note cards are for sale at Mitchell Hardware and at Poor Charlie's Antiques and Flea Market in downtown and also in Trent Woods at Pick Frame and Gallery. Right. There's three locations to purchase the cards. <coughs> They'll also be for sale at one of the houses uh, on the Holly and Ivy tour. Okay. I'll bring your checkbook along if you want to pick some up there. All right. Well, Chris, we can't thank you enough. Great seeing you again. You look fantastic. Thanks. And, uh, I'm going to a Christmas party tonight. I didn't know if you'd recognize me. I had my hair done. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> thank you for having us. And thank you for all of the support that you've given us. We're delighted to, to um, be a, a good partner for you. And we just hope that everyone comes out and has a great time and have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Wonderful. Yeah. Have a great, uh, have a fun thank time you. tonight. And we'll see you at the Holly in the High Beat. Okay. I'll be there all day. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Woo! <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. So I had a mouse that is, I, I'm seeing out of the corner of my eye in my house, and I'm about to flip out. <laughs> <laughs> Like a real mouse? Yes, like a real mouse. I thought I saw one the other day, and I'm like, no way. And sure enough, oh God. Uh, a, a creature is stirring, even a mouse. <laughs> I don't know where he is, though. Uh, OK, sorry. So if you see me run, that's, that's why. Or if I stand on this chair. Uh. It's just a little visitor, a little furry, furry visitor. Coming they to say see where you. there's one, though, there's like a million. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know about this. Oh my god! <laughs> Hang in there. You can do this. You can do it. <laughs> so, all right, we want to run down the list of events real quick because we're. Oh, let's do the contest real quick. If you're, uh, if you're watching and you know the answer, um, <laughs> write it. Type it in the, the live stream here. Um, the question is, when was the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame founded? And we'll get to the answer after we do the events. So what's first one? The ninth, uh, December 9th is uh, the, eighth, the eighth today. Oh my gosh, December. Is this is the event over? No, it's not. It's the eighth annual Jingle Bell Trot, and it's that's starting at 6 p.m. at 3712 Canterbury Road in Trent Woods. So that's like a, a jog, like a like a a run, like a real run, like run, walk, whatever okay. you're you're up for. So okay. yeah, yeah. The 10th and 11th, the Christmas light tour by carriage, uh, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. <clears throat> at Nautical Wheelers at the corner of South Front and Craven Streets. So carriage rides, I guess, yes? Yep, nice carriage, so that's, that's fun to ride. And what's next? <laughs> the 10th is, is for actually Mari, it's the Critters Exhibition. <laughs> From five to eight at the Bank of the Arts on Middle Street. Uh, you can call 252-637-2588 two, two, 
And if weather is decent, and I think it will be, the Christmas movie, The Polar Express, will be featured at Union Point Park, 6 p.m. Bring your blankets and chairs and enjoy the movie. Awesome. So also on the 10th, there is the annual, the 10th annual Canterbury Christmas Light Ride at 6.30 p.m. at Bangert Elementary, which is at 3712 Canterbury Road and Trent Woods. If you're interested, please call 252-638-1544. And on the, <laughs> then, then on the 10th, we have the 37th annual Christmas concert at 7 p.m. At Fairfield, at Fairfield Harbor Community Center, 104 Marina Drive. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas. Wow. And on the 10th, it's the Art <laughs> Walk. It's all that, that's very and bright Art Walk. And that's at Community Artist Gallery Studio at 309 Middle Street. And Art Walk, for any Art Walk information, you need to check out Craven Arts Council, cravenarts.org, the website, mm -hmm. and, or stop by um, the Bank of the Arts and they have a, a, a art walk card with all the participating businesses, so. Nice. Also the 10th is a Christmas concert and dinner featuring Brooke McBride, who I believe is a country singer, and it's 7 p.m. at Stanley Hall, ballroom and they are at 249 Craven Street. Number for that is 252-626-3723. A lot of stuff on the 10th. The Holiday Recital by Erica Butters, uh, 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. at Christ Church at 320 Pollock Street. And last but not least on the 10th, there's a holiday sip and shop vendor event from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And that's at our good friend Mitchell Hardware at 215 Craven Street in downtown New Bern. Yeah, they'll have all kinds of goodies, probably giveaways and stuff. So, and speaking of giveaways, the, um, the New Bern Fall Home and Gift Expo is on the 11th and 12th. And that's from 6 to... No, that I'm reading wrong. That's from 10 a, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the New Bern Riverfront Convention Center. And wow, there's always all kinds of different unique things to see at that um, expo. So, yeah. What else do we have? On the 11th, we have the Craven Smart Start Holiday Hustle. That's from 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And that starts at Union Point Park. And if you're interested in that, call 252-636-3198. Also the 11th is Cars and Coffee in New Bern uh, behind Belks. Uh, car, <laughs> all sorts of cars will be exhibited there for that event at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the Cookie Walk, 22nd annual Cookie Walk, at the Harrison Center on 311 Middle Street. Uh, doors will open at 10. That number is 252-631-1474. Yeah, and you you gotta get there like as soon as the doors open because they're gonna be sold out. So oh, I know, probably before yeah. noon. Yeah. What else? The 11th, the New Bern Police Department stuffed the SRV for Toys for Tots, uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Walmart on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Woo -hoo. Rock. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of toys. Um, also on the 11th, we have the Havelock Christmas Parade from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, and you can call 252-444-6429 if you are interested in that event. Very merry. <laughs> All right, yeah. And then you have on the, the 11th to 12th, you have the Craft Fair and Small Business Expo. And that's out at, in Aurora at the Aurora Community Center. Um, so check that out. That's going to be the Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 4. And that's at the Aurora Community Center. I think that's the first one. Well, that's the first one we're aware of. So Get out, get out to Aurora and check out all the, you know, they have the fossil museum. So it's, it's 
Sounds like a good time. Oh, and also in Aurora, you have the fire department barbecue fundraiser on the 12th, and that's at 11 a.m. until it's sold out. That's a good way to put it. Hey, you get here or <laughs> we're going to be out, you know? Their Christmas parade is also the 12th in Aurora, 3 p.m. on Main Street in Aurora. And then also on the 12th is the Fairfield Harbor Chorus Holiday Concert. It's the 37th annual concert starting at 3 p.m. at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church on Boulevard. Let's see. Critters exhibit reception on the 12th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Bank of the Arts. 317 Middle Street. And the 37th annual Christmas concert at 7 p.m. at Fairfield Community Center, 104 Marina Drive. On the 16th, we have Wreaths Across America, a motorcycle escort and arrival. And that will be at 8.45 a.m. As well as Little Talks with my favorite bunch, the Craven Arts Council. It's a lecture by Steve, and excuse me if I jack this up, but it, uh, <laughs> Zawitstowski. That, I think you nailed Please it. Please forgive yeah. me ahead of time. <laughs> but that is, um, <laughs> that is an awesome series that the uh, Craven Arts Council um, has, and this little talk is from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Bank of the Arts at 317 Middle Street, and you can call us at 252-638-2577 if you are interested in tickets for that event. The 17th and 18th of December, if you need one too, you can continue to do a horse-drawn Christmas light tour on a carriage from 3 to 8 p.m., uh, pick up at Nautical Wheelers, which is the corner of South Front and Craven Streets. And one of my personal favorites, although we're not a dog owner, is the 15th annual Paws Parade on December 18th from 9 to 10. Meet at the corner of South Front and Craven Street. Uh, number on that is 252-637-0247. There will be what they call a sniff and greet. <laughs> uh, where Mistletoe Market is, where all the dogs will meet and kind of congregate and get to know each other a little bit. They'll all, most of them will be dressed in amazing costumes and they just go around a block or two of downtown New Bern. It's a wonderful parade. Wonderful to see. You know, Pat, you can borrow Finn and you could probably ride him. So <laughs> <laughs> that will keep him from, from going, not going after, but trying to play with all the the other animals so <laughs> he can't behave and then uh let's see what else is uh, mimosas and mutt fundraiser and that's mari that's at the garage right yes yeah, so bottomless mimosas mutt skis um it's a colonial capital it's really going to be a, a neat no that's not colonial yeah it is colonial capital because jenna made that flyer so yeah they're going to be there with all their mutts and just raising money. We love working with those guys. They're our absolute favorite. So I can't wait for that event. Well, thank you for doing that. That's, oh, man. that's really special. We love it. We always yeah. have them bring the pups out there. Let's see. I got lost. And uh, we have Santa Can. Santa Con. Santa Con. Yep. Downtown on the waterfront, all the bars. Yep. That's on the 18th at noon, right? Starting at noon, who knows when it's going to end? <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink and drive, folks. Please call so call our friend. Hours later, <laughs> call our friend Victor Ball at Shuttle Me Transportation, and he'll yes. get you get you home <laughs> safely. So, and then Advent lessons and carols on the nineteenth at Christ Episcopal Church. Call 633-2109 for more information. And uh, there's all kind of there's all kinds of music. Uh, uh, the local bands playing. And for for that calendar, check out the New Bern Music Calendar on uh, Facebook. Facebook. Getting some back feed here. Uh, thank you, Joanne Friedman, for doing that. And then what else? 
I think that might be a wrap Except for our contest. <laughs> oh, the contest. Okay. All right. Contest is, um, what? Is, is there somebody, is music playing or something? Somebody oh. unmuted? Square oh, echo. Probably me. Okay. <laughs> when was the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame founded? Anyone? <laughs> Am I frozen? I'm not frozen. No, you guys are just it's quiet. <laughs> We're quiet. Okay. <laughs> it, the year was 1962. So okay. we'll just carry that that local uh, the gift certificate to gift certificate to the local business on uh, to next week. And uh, so for more information uh, about any kind of events, uh, check out newburnnow.com, the calendar. Um, and is that a wrap, folks? That's a wrap. That's a wrap? Okay. Is it a Christmas wrap yet or not yet? <laughs> is it a Christmas wrap? <laughs> <laughs> and so if you have any announcements, stories, events, um, Send us, send us the information to 259-6853 or send us an email at info at newburnnow.com. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, and anything else, you guys? Nope. Yeah, join us this weekend at Flows for Greek Night. We're celebrating all of the fraternities and the sororities. And if you bring an unwrapped gift, you get half off of your entry. So it'll be $5 with an unwrapped gift. And that goes to a uh, local family as well as next weekend's NAACP Christmas party with Yup and the Brothers of Sigma. And as well, if you're feeling the pinch of this holiday stress, don't hesitate to go to braintap.com and get your little meditation in. Outside of that, it is a Christmas wrap for me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for listening. And we'll try to cue up this music if it works. Have a great day. See you guys. Bye. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.